There are five ways to take control of your subconscious mind. The main reason most people don't master the power of their mind, and by extension their lives, is that they don't understand how the subconscious mind works. It's important to know the difference between the roles of the aware mind and the subconscious mind because our real power comes from them. It is very important to align your subconscious mind with the right ways to change results if you want to use your mind to attract something or change something about yourself. You have to get in touch with your subconscious in a way that lets it work with you and change any underlying rules or choices that are being kept secret. Here are five strong ways we think you can do this. Step one, be willing to take risks. One, high-class men and women who are willing to take risks are always pushing themselves and going beyond their comfort zones. They are well aware of how quickly getting stuck in a comfort zone can turn into a rut. They know that being comfortable is the worst thing that can happen to inspiration and new ideas for the future. The subconscious mind finds unknowns scary, so taking risks is an important part of being successful. This makes change easier by going against the rules you already know, which changes things in your subconscious. You have to account for a variable that you don't know, something that isn't what your mind already knows. The mind does know some things, but not all of them. It knows everything there is to know. It might even know all the things that are possible, but it has to believe in those prospects for each person. If you want a new life, you have to push your subconscious mind to look for new things. When you do something new for the first time, be ready to feel weird and uncomfortable. When you try to do something new or different or break out of a habit, your subconscious mind makes you feel bad mentally and physically, but taking risks pushes the limits and builds advanced, wider comfort zones and a more open subconscious mind. A common misunderstanding is that taking chances can be bad. It's not really more dangerous to take a chance than to play it safe or keep things the same. When we don't try new things, make changes, and move forward in different parts of our lives, we often leave ourselves open to becoming stuck and falling behind. There is a much smaller chance for growth beyond what is already happening if people don't take risks. Risk can lead to new reasons that have new effects. When you take risks, you always have the chance of making mistakes or not getting the results you want. But the world's most successful people know that losing is what drives them to reach their goals in the end. The difference is how they see what they call failure. Most people are okay with failing because they know what will happen and how hard they worked. They think about taking a new risk instead of giving up and giving up for good if the first one doesn't work out. This changes the limits of the subconscious as a result. When you act and think this way, your subconscious mind has no choice but to agree with your conscious mind that it will keep trying until it works. When this kind of surrender happens in the subconscious, boundaries are replaced with higher standards that bring about new results and bring the conscious wishes into line. Step 2. Use Auto-Inquisition Putting thoughts into your subconscious mind is a strong way to change them. Asking questions lets you think about these unknown factors that were already stated and lets your mind be open to finding new answers. If you're having trouble getting an answer or solving a problem, your subconscious mind is there to help you find the fastest way to do it. It takes the road with the least amount of pushback and works on the concept of least effort. Again, this is to make sure you stay alive. Can you not answer a question? Could you skip this one? It is important to remember that your subconscious mind replied all of those questions before you even knew what you were saying, the brain can't say no to a question. Before it can even think about being a question, it has to turn the question into an answer. We can make good use of this. The secret is to make the question very clear so that it can get through the walls of the subconscious mind. What else is possible that I have not yet considered is a type of question that lets this happen. When you ask this question, your subconscious mind has to go, 
look for something unknown because it has already thought of every possibility it knows of. It will keep looking until it finds the answer. When you phrase questions about your wants in a certain way, your subconscious starts to look for answers right away. Some examples of these kinds of thoughts are, how cool is it that I have so much money? What am I going to do with all this extra cash? What do I need to get ahead in life? And how can I make this happen? Your subconscious mind can't shut these thoughts out. It starts working right away and tries to answer any questions. The answer may not come to you at the moment, but your brain has already thought of it and your subconscious is holding on to it for you. What if questions are also linked to the subconscious mind? What if I were successful at my goals? What would that look like? When we keep asking questions and keep looking for more questions, we can make more changes in our lives by subconsciously looking for answers. The mind comes to decisions that make it possible to grow even more. Asking your subconscious mind what else is possible and what if questions over and over will keep it on its toes, which will help you get the results you want. Auto-inquisition is the name of this method, which can be set up in any way that works best for you. Artists like Beethoven and Bach used it, as did Thomas Edison and many other engineers. Thomas Edison practiced auto-inquisition by sitting in his favorite chair and taking a short break while holding metal balls above a metal bowl. He would think about a question about a problem he was trying to solve while he went to rest. Just as he was about to fall asleep, his hand would loosen up and the balls would hit the metal bowl, waking him up. For Edison, this meant that he could stay in a state between resting and thinking, where he could reach knowledge in his subconscious mind. When you play auto-inquisition while you're sleepy, you're in a great mental state for creativity that can help you find answers amazingly quickly. Questions asked right before bed, when you're calm and about to fall asleep, will help auto-inquisition work better and improve your chances of success. Your subconscious mind's job is to store and recover information. When people wake up after falling asleep with a question in their mind, they often find that the answer or the next step toward their goal has been given to them magically. Step three, what to expect. In your subconscious, the power of hopes runs your life and makes predictions come true. Your subconscious mind's big plan is based on what you expect. Expectations are based on your opinion that you are a certain type of person with a certain job. These expectations can make you great or failed. Expectations can either give you the drive to do more or make you sad and unfulfilled. The bad news is that many people's hopes are limited by what they went through in their early years. Finding ways to change your expectations, on the other hand, is a strong way to make good changes in your life. Your brain stores thousands of memories of things you do all the time in your subconscious mind so you can access them right away. Combinational patterns are known by all nerve cells. Any cells that aren't connected to your present issue get blocked because they can't figure out how they fit into the nervous system's overall pattern of connections. In the brain, there are circuits that turn off other circuits when they get active. In this way, meaning is found by getting rid of things. This is how everything you do works. It gets rid of all the words in your language that don't fit with the flow of your thought for each word you use. So, the same process can make your goals smaller if you don't push them to grow through practice. When the mind thinks that something bad is going to happen in life, it may become hard to stay in a place of hopeful expectation. As the survival machine that it is, it will often make a bad assumption or prediction about what is going on. These are the times when it's important to have a depth that lets you stay open to the mind's flow without becoming connected with it. This space stops your energy from being completely changed by your mind's negativity. This makes room for new ideas and hopes to come up on their own. 
Start to change your hopes into more positive ones by getting rid of any negative thoughts that your mind keeps sending you. Just let these ideas be what they are and then let them go without attaching any kind of meaning to them, good or bad. The best way to think is to never think negatively about anything that happens. Instead, think of everything as a step toward a better world. Being in this state of open, hopeful expectation is very powerful. It keeps you in sync with your life stream and makes it easy to bring about answers and realities you want. Building up your self-confidence and success will also easily lead to good hopes. In this way, teaching your mind over and over that you are these things is helpful. To do this, one way is to be aware of everything in your life that makes you happy, no matter how small it may seem. But expecting a smaller prize makes you feel more energized and releases dopamine. You train your brain to unconsciously look for more happiness by paying attention to the things that make you happy. In turn, this leads to new standards and a biased mind. Step 4. Take some time to meditate. If we can get our left, logical brain out of the way, the right brain's reality can come forward. This brings more balance and joy into our lives and into our awareness. The subconscious mind lives in the right brain. When we meditate, the right brain is used and the left brain is put to rest. After that, the right brain is given more power. By placing our wants and goals here, we can more effectively bring them into being and make things happen. This makes both sides of the brain work better together and gives you more power. To put it another way, deciding on purpose to work on your effects gives your subconscious mind a chance to lead the way. If you have never meditated before, all you have to do is find a quiet place, close your eyes, and take a few deep, long breaths to calm your mind and body. Pay attention to how your thoughts come and go at random and then let them go without trying to hold on to them. Start to pay attention to the way you naturally breathe. If you notice that your mind is wandering to thinking, gently bring your attention back to your breathing. The number of thoughts you have will slowly go down as your breathing gets more regular and your body relaxes. Focus your mind on what you want to do. During this state, your mind is in a place where whatever you focus on will be firmly etched into your subconscious. Meditation is a way to sleep without falling asleep. Scientists have found proof that people who meditate are more aware of what their brains are doing without them realizing it. This makes them feel like they have more control over their bodies and their lives. In the same way that sleep gives you energy for daily tasks, meditation gives you creative energy for what you want to do. Mindfulness training helps people reach their goals by letting them consciously access the power of their subconscious mind. It has also been shown to help people reach a better level of consciousness, become more focused, creative, self-aware, and calm. The part of the brain that constantly refers back to your point of view and experiences, along with its strong, tightly held link to body feeling and the fear centers, starts to break down when you meditate regularly. It is no longer thought that a physical feeling or a short-lived fear means something is wrong or that the self is the problem as this link weakens. So, as you start to break the link, it gets easier to ignore worry symptoms, leaving behind a more positive, healthy and logical subconscious mind. As time goes on and practice is put in, people become quieter, more empathetic and more sure of how to react to things, people and events in their lives. When it comes to wants, this kind of behavior sends out an energy that is good for getting what you want. Still, it's important to meditate every day to keep the new brain paths that you create through meditation. Keep in mind that there are different ways to meditate and each person should choose the one that works best for them. Step 5. Learn to receive with awareness. You can teach your subconscious mind that you can receive the things you want. This is one of the best ways to get what you want. 
you have to send out the message that you deserve everything you want and then be ready to receive it. Imagine that your mind has a receiver that can send and receive sounds to get your request to you. Your mind uses vibrations in the same way that a radio listener does. It uses an antenna to pick up radio waves, processes the ones that are moving at the right frequency, and then sends the sound through speakers. Believe that you are worthwhile, not good enough, distant and unlovable, even if you feel these things. Your worth and perfection were already there when you were born, and nothing you do, be or have can change that. These views are just old habits. It's interesting that most people are better at giving than receiving. This is because giving makes someone happy or gives them something good. To be a good listener, you need to practice, be close to the person and let them in. When you're a good receiver, you show respect for the person who gave you by giving them the same reward, the pleasure of seeing you receive. Being grateful for what you have is fine. In fact, everything in the world wants to party with you. Also, the more we get, the more we know we need to give. Get better at this by accepting praise with grace and not putting the blame on the other person. Thank them and take it. This might be unfamiliar to your mind at first because it is uncomfortable. Still, you'll notice that after a few times, you'll feel less uncomfortable and more grateful for the praise and yourself. For your mind to open up to, this sets a new limit. Pay attention to the good things that happen in your life and be thankful for them. Being grateful means recognizing that what's happening makes you happy so that more good things can happen to you. It also shows that you are aware that you are receiving good things. You can get more if you are thankful for what you already have. Based on how you feel, your subconscious mind will work hard to find more of what makes you happy. Don't think about what you don't have. Instead, be thankful for what you do have. Everything in your life, people, places, things, and even your problems, is helping you grow and make more of what you want. Repeat the phrase, I am worthy to yourself, as many times as you need to, until you believe it. This auto-suggestion will help your subconscious mind show you the truth of that statement more and more as you use it. Determine to get what you want and know that everything in the world is there to help you. Most importantly, work on liking yourself even when other people don't agree with you. Changing your subconscious mind for the better is a habit, not a theory. This caring energy automatically brings more of what you love to you. In other words, if you really want to make changes in your life, you have to put in time and work to do so. The subconscious mind is a powerful machine that can do anything. Anyone can change its programming to make it work for them, or they can let their old programming control them. You open yourself up to new situations and opportunities in life when you let your beliefs change. This also gives your goals more power to come true more easily. Realize that your feelings and thoughts are just strong, pure energy. Your ideas have a direct impact on what you draw because of what you think in your mind and feel in your body. Because of this, each of us can send good energy to our minds to create the life we want. Everyone has the power to use their mind to get rich, lose weight, have happy relationships, stay healthy, and have fun. By using the power of their subconscious minds, people have magically gotten better from diseases that were thought to be deadly and brought in a lot of money. It's possible for your conscious mind to be the farmer, and it can grow anything you plant. Choose of the seeds you want to use and put them in the garden of your subconscious mind. Cover the seeds gently and water them every day while they are out there. Soon, a wonderful thing will start to happen somewhere under the ground. The beautiful ground of the subjective mind responds with the seed. Conscious work will help the farmer keep the plant going and it will grow from the soul and reach for the sun. The amazing creative work takes place in your subconscious mind. If you take good care of it, all of your wishes will come true.